we want to find the exact value of the expression. We are given cosine of two times inverse sine of negative 12 thirteenths. The first thing to recognize here is that the inverse sine of negative 12 thirteenths is equal to an angle theta that has a sine function value equal to the input into the inverse sine function and the angle theta is in the closed interval from negative 90 degrees to positive 90 degrees. So in our case, the angle theta has a sine function value of negative 12 thirteenths. So if we let inverse sine of negative 12 thirteenths equal theta, we can say that given expression is equal to cosine two theta. For the next step, we will model the angle theta on the coordinate plane and then sketch the reference triangle. Notice here, because the sine function value is negative, we know the angle theta must be negative and terminate in the fourth quadrant. So let's say the angle theta terminates here, and therefore here's the angle theta. And now let's sketch the reference triangle. Because the sine function value is equal to negative 12 thirteenths, this gives us the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse for the reference triangle. And we know the hypotenuse is always positive, and therefore we label the opposite side negative 12 and the hypotenuse 13. And this should make sense because y is negative in the fourth quadrant. And now let's find the length of the adjacent side using the Pythagorean theorem. We may recognize this is a 5, 12, 13 right triangle, and therefore the adjacent side has a length of five units. But let's verify this using the Pythagorean theorem. And let's use the Pythagorean theorem in the form of a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Let's let a equal the unknown length, which gives us a squared plus, let's let b equal negative 12. So we have plus the square of negative 12 equals c squared, where c squared is the square of 13. Simplifying, we have a squared plus 144 equals 169. To isolate a squared, we subtract 144 on both sides, which gives us a squared equals 25. And now to solve for a, we take the square root of both sides of the equation. Algebraically, we have two solutions, one positive and one negative. So we have a equals plus or minus five. But because we're in the fourth quadrant where x is positive, we know a has to be positive five. Now that we have the reference triangle for the angle theta, we can use a double angle identity and evaluate cosine two theta. Notice there are three options for cosine two a. Let's go ahead and just use the first one, since cosine two a is equal to cosine squared a minus sine squared a. We have cosine two theta is equal to two. We have cosine two theta is equal to cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. And now we can determine the cosine and sine function values using the reference triangle. Cosine theta is equal to the ratio of the adjacent side to the hypotenuse, which gives us 5 thirteenths. So we have the square of 5 thirteenths minus sine theta is equal to the ratio of the opposite side to the hypotenuse, which is negative 12 thirteenths, which was also given in the original expression giving us the square of negative 12 thirteenths. And now simplifying to square our fraction, we square the numerator and denominator. The square of 5 thirteenths is equal to 25 1 ninths minus the square of negative 12 thirteenths is 144 1 ninths. And now subtracting, the denominator stays the same and we subtract the numerators. 25 minus 144 is equal to negative 119, and therefore the given expression is equal to negative 119, 169 ths. I hope you found this helpful.